Hello, my name is Benny Müller, and I'm at the University of Oxford, the Environmental Change Institute and the Philosophy Faculty. And I have been asked to give a very short introduction, a 101, on climate justice. And what I decided to do is to do a little uh, presentation, which I want to share with you now. What I want to talk about is, in essence, what's justice got to do with climate change? And the first thing to keep in mind is that climate change is not a natural disaster. It is not an act of God. It is what we call anthropogenic. And that is to say it is caused by humans. Humans who are expected to take responsibility for their actions and be held responsible for them. I have highlighted some of the terms in red simply because these are the ones which I think are important that you are familiarizing yourselves with. So the fact that climate change is anthropogenic, caused by humans, together with the fact that it can have negative impacts on humans, means that we're dealing with a situation where humans can impose harm on others without their consent. And this is generally seen to be unjust. Now, there are different ways in which this sort of injustice can be dealt with. For example, one can provide compensation for the harm caused. And this type of justice, this sort of justice, would be called compensatory justice. We can also punish the perpetrators, the people who have caused the harm, in which case we're talking about punitive justice. Many difficult issues are associated with these approaches. For example, in the case of compensatory justice, in the context of environmental pollution, also known as the pollute to pays principle, some key questions arise, namely, who decides what constitutes adequate compensation? Who should provide it and how much? And should it be in proportion to the responsibility for those who harm, or should it be in proportion to what one can afford, what one is capable to provide? A very important point here is that, unfortunately, the way the world is, we have a disproportionate brunt of impacts borne by the poor and the most vulnerable, women, indigenous and tribal communities, small island states, and it is they who are least responsible for the problem. Which is also why in the context of the negotiations, we surprisingly in my mind, but very, I mean, it's a very good thing, we're now talking about loss and damage. Loss and damage occurs when all our efforts to reduce emissions, to reduce impacts through adaptation have been exhausted and we actually face losses and damages, which we already do. Now, the distinction between responsibilities and capabilities, which I just referred to, also plays an important role in another climate justice issue, namely, how do we share the effort or the burden involved in addressing climate change in a fair manner? In the context of the negotiation, the fair manner is usually seen to be between countries, between parties to the different uh, uh, treaties. This is an issue of what is called distributive justice, which is there to establish what it means to do one's fair share, in this case, in combating climate change. Now, in the UNFCCC, in the Climate Convention, the very first principles listed under Article 3 is that parties should protect the climate system for the benefits of present and future generations of humankind on the basis of equity, of fairness, and in accordance with their common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities. And it goes on to say, accordingly, developed country parties, developed countries 
should take the lead in combating climate change and the adverse effects thereof. This shows that justice considerations in this context the view, the, the uh, acknowledgement that developing countries in 1995 had far less to do with the cause and responsibility than developed countries can have concrete uh, impacts and practical implications. Because following this principle, we had the Kyoto Protocol, where developing countries were exempted from, from having targets because it was seen that it would be unfair to impose burdens on them since they were largely not responsible for what, what had happened. But it also, Article 3.1 also arises another cross-cutting issues uh, about climate justice, namely that the, the harm being caused can go across generations. It need not be just within the same generation. Because we actually are now in a position that we can harm future generations who by definition have no responsibility whatsoever of, on the problem by not doing our bit. And this is an important issue which you should keep in mind, which is called intergenerational justice. And I think looking at these four or five different types of justice and the issues involved from fair burden sharing to actually dealing with harm caused to others in the same generation or across generations, I think encapsulates the main issues we deal with in the climate change negotiations under the topic of climate justice. Thank you very much.